Acura Scale's HYA Coal and IIA Biomass Hopper Wagons have been one of the most anticipated wagon releases of 2022. Having put them through a week of extensive use, how have they stacked up versus my expectations? It's time to take a closer look. Thank you for joining today's review. I had initially thought of doing separate reviews for both the HYA and IIA wagon types, but having worked with both of them over the last week, my assessment and scoring for both would be the same, and hence I am combining the reviews and will cover both ranges in this review. We'll kick off with an unboxing and first look at both wagon types. We'll then get into our close-up and 360 degree views. We'll follow that with a short running session of each wagon type and a discussion on the overall performance characteristics and some issues that were found. We'll then get into our usual summary, scoring and final recommendations. There's going to be a few bumps on the road here, so strap yourself in and let's get to it. Alright, uh, this is a moment I've been waiting for. Uh, this is to look at the uh, Acura Scale HYA wagons and really looking forward to these. I'm going to look at two sets here, just to, and the, and the out of box. Uh, one is in the uh, GBRF Coal branding, and the other is in the Fast uh, Fastline Freight branding. Uh, so we'll take a look at both of these, um, just from an out of box perspective, and then we'll do a running session with the full mixed rake. I've got ten of these wagons. I've got five of the packs. So I've got ten wagons in total. So that's a decent rake, and we'll uh, put that behind a Class 66 uh, for the running session. Well, let's get this guy out of the box. Um, it's the same sort of packaging as you'll be familiar with from CureScale, if you've ever got a CureScale wagons before. It's a very good quality of packaging, uh, provides a good level of protection. Uh, now that we're looking at pack one here, and there's three different packs actually for this particular one that, that come in this particular livery. And Got an extra piece of protection there, which is no harm to see, and lots of extra little sticky pads all over the place to give extra protection to the body, which is again to be welcomed. Now this guy's got a, a tail light on him. He's a little bit bent, so we'll we'll, we'll fix him. Uh, There's supposed to be a working tail light there. Um, on it only comes with the pack one, so I do believe these are selling out very quickly as a result because people want to pick these ones up. Um, so it. Very nice, interesting livery. I've been very interested in this livery. I certainly, I certainly like it from looking at videos of it. And uh, it seems to be rendered very well here. Uh, there's a lot of separately fitted detail here, some ducting there, a huge amount of printed labeling all over it, and, and, and levels of detail down here, and um, some separately fitted levers and things like that. Um, looking, looking really good. Uh, obviously empty, There's, it doesn't come with any load, so we'll need to put something in there uh, for the running session. And just looking on the other side, so again, a lot of very nice detail. A lot of nice little detail on the bogies and some printing, printing on the bogies as well, which is the first time I've ever seen that. Um, so we'll take a look at that in the close-up view. And the wheels are nice and free running. Um, now I'm just wondering about the given that this one does have the lighting function, uh, what actually powers that light? And that's a question we'll need to get an answer to before the end of this. I don't see any pickups on the bogies there, so it doesn't look like it's getting power from the rails. I hope it's not a battery. I hate these batteries. Um, we shall see. Um, let's figure that one out. Um, okay, so it really looks good. Looks a really top-notch wagon from a Cura scale, as I suppose we were expecting. Uh, but I'm not disappointed. Uh, it, it does look like everything I was hoping for. Okay, so before we finish up here, let's just take a look at what we have in the base of the box. So, to take out the, that layer there, and uh, we'll see what we've got underneath here. So we've got a, a piece of documentation just covering the history of the HYA wagons, a breakdown of the parts, and it covers both with and without the tail lamp. And this is the actual functioning of the tail lamp. Now, I guess 
what I don't like to see is batteries. Um, and you have to install two batteries in the rear. So I'll take a look at that later on. LR41 batteries, I'm not familiar with those. So I'll just be honest with you. I, I just think this is, um, this is just a bit cheap and I don't like it. I've seen it on another wagon uh, from Revolution Trains with the rear tail light and um, I just don't like it. I, I don't like this way of doing it. I, th I think they should be taking power off the rails and using the power from the track. Just my opinion. Uh, I don't think we need to be introducing new batteries um, and just creating extra hassle. And sourcing these batteries can be really messy. Uh, like I found for the Revolution Trains wagon, which I review, which I'm going to post, um, I found it really hard. I couldn't get them locally. And it actually cost me a bit of money to get them uh, from eBay, uh, far more than if I'd just been able to get them in a shop locally. And of course, they're going to wear out over time, uh, whether you're using them or not. Why they can't just put some pickups on the bogies and um, and power from the rails, you know? Sorry. So this is the little wand to turn it on and off, a little magnetic wand, as I show you in the instructions. And there is an extra detailing kit with some extra pipe work. Um, so you may want to look at that. Um, yeah, there's certainly that could certainly be added to the, the buffer beams. Uh, there's certainly spaces for them and some kind of extra kind of coupler detail there. So this is the fast line livery, and um, there's a variant of this as well. There's another variant of this which we will look at. Uh, I do have. Um, we will take a look at that later on. I'll just take this out. And I suppose it's really mainly a branding difference because the rest of the wagon is, is the same. Um, so that looks to be pretty nicely rendered. So slightly different look. See the GBRF uh, branding is very distinctive and gives the wagon a particular look. Uh, but this. This looks fine, this looks very clean and uh, really good. I, I guess the only other comment I'll make here is, um, is that they're only available in the pristine livery, which is a little bit unfortunate. And uh, particularly for freight wagons, it's different for modern coaches and locomotives, which are kept very clean these days. But for freight wagons, I think um, the, getting them out of the box in a, I suppose, a weathered form is, is pretty good. And I, I've always kind of, liked to to get them that way things like the ica wagons from dapol for example you know they're totally look they look totally different when they're actually weathered um and and they look they look a lot better actually i think and it would be nice uh, the, there wouldn't be as dramatic a difference for wagons like these but i think uh, a weathered option wouldn't go astray uh put it that way um for this type of wagon but that's a, a small criticism, I think, for what are really, really good wag looking wagons. Okay, so we'll do some close-up views with some, some of the other wagons as well, and then we'll get into our running session. Okay, so this looks uh, pretty good. These look really nice wagons from Acura scale. Okay, now we're going to do a kind of a speeded up unboxing for the IIA wagon, uh, biomass wagon, just to give you a quick look at that. Uh, it's physically pretty well identical apart from the lid and some extra detail uh, either side of the lid for the these wagons and obviously the labeling or branding detail is different uh, but otherwise it shares pretty well all the same characteristics same bogies uh, etc same kind of separately fitted detail in general so uh, that's just to give you a quick look at that one now we're going to take a look at installing the tail light. Uh, we're going to do it on the biomass wagon. So we're just you take off this rear panel, and there's a similar rear panel on the HYA wagons. So you can see the compartment in there for two batteries. Battery type, it's actually the equivalent of an AG3 battery, which I luckily had a few of them lying around. So I have two of them to put in here. And you put them with the positive terminal down. So we've got the two in there now. We're used to using the wand to turn on and off the, uh, the, the LED. There's a magnet inside the body there and a magnetic switch. And that basically, using the wand, you can, you can turn that on and off. Okay, so this all looks to be working uh, fine. So we're just going to replace the, the little cover at the back and pop that back on. And just make sure not to uh, impact any of the detail at the top there. So we're done. Okay, now we're going to get into the close-up view. So we'll do the usual close-up view for the one of the wagons, one of the coal wagons, and then we'll 
do the 360 views for all the different wagon types because uh, you'll get a, a better view of those with the 360 view. But just looking along the side here, you can see the tremendous level of printed detail. It's absolutely phenomenal, the amount of printed detail, including the bogies there, printing on the underbody there, uh, a lot of clear printing on the upper body. So just going along the body here, I think the GBRF uh, branding, that the, the large lettering there is very distinctive and uh, combined with the kind of grey finish. Uh, now the grey finish probably appears a little bit brighter in this view than in reality. Uh, you'd, you'd obviously see them quite darkened in, in reality. Again, you can see the darkened wheels there. And again, again, a massive amount of separately applied printed detail, as well as some separately fitted parts there, the, the, the valve handles, etc. And uh, sprung buffers at the end as well. So overall, a, a fantastically detailed uh, model. Now here we're getting the full 360 view, uh, which I think um, probably even shows you another level of detail. These really are fine looking wagons, there's no doubt about that, and they've been well, very well executed and to a very good level of consistency and quality. Um, as I say, I've got 20 wagons in total, 8 of the biomass and 12 of the uh, coal wagons, and they're all of this level of, of quality. And you can see they're very nice ducting there along the, the underside. So overall, you know, this is a really nice, a really nice wagon. They're top notch from a, a visual perspective, and I think um, I'll be scoring them a 10 out of 10 for this aspect. There's no doubt about that. These are really uh, spectacular wagons from an appearance and detail perspective. So we'll take a quick look at some of the others. This is the fast line freight livery version. It has a kind of slightly different look to it, albeit the wagon is fundamentally the same, uh, though there is, there is some uh, differences, uh, not just in the branding, but in some of the positioning and some of the numbering, etc. Uh, so you will see uh, some differences across from a printing perspective. And similarly, the, the Toex uh, livery here, which you kind of the, the fast line freight kind of grayed out there. And again, some, some slight differences uh, from a printing perspective as well as the branding, uh, but fundamentally, again, the same wagon. And now we're, we're looking at the, uh, the biomass wagons here. And you can see the lid on the top there and the uh, the opening detail for the lid on either side that's been added so again fundamentally the same wagon but with this additional parts added uh, to the top to, to effectively turn it into a biomass uh, wagon and again everything else that we uh, commented on previously so now we're going to get into the running session and i guess this is where things start to get interesting so the first running session here is running with eight of the coal wagons uh, with a Batman uh, class 66 and I have to say I was really challenged getting this running session going. I was finding a lot of resistance with these wagons on, on my track uh, running on a, layer, uh, a radius 3 circuit here, my, it's my outer circuit and uh, this locomotive was really challenged. You'll probably see it kind of speed up slightly there, see that? And that was due to a catching on the curves and there's actually a piece of underbody detail and we'll get into this in, in more detail in a little while uh, that was catching and providing a very high level of resistance for the locomotive. Now there was also resistance in terms of just the bogies themselves and prior to this running session uh, I did an initial running session and I was getting a current draw of about 450 milliamps which is very high for this locomotive. This is a very efficient locomotive. No reason I should be drawing 450 milliamps uh, with an eight uh, wagon load like this. I did apply oil to the axles and that dropped my current consumption by 100 milliamps. <laughs> you know, that's a significant reduction. So there was a level of resistance there that just the application of some lubricant actually improved the running performance. It still wasn't addressing the fundamental issue on the curves, however. So there's kind of a stuttery performance here. It's not maybe that visible in the running session. And I have the full running session. Some of you may already watch them, uh, but I'll put the links in the description for those who haven't. So there's a full running session for this. You know, my Batman was really being challenged because of the level of resistance. And, you know, a Batman locomotive shouldn't be having a problem with eight hopper wagons like this. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. So we go through the end of the running session and that was really the main issue here. There was a little bit of wobble here and there as well. So you may have noticed that at points in time. And we'll see it again in the, the running session now, which is a higher, we're running at higher speeds now. Now these, these wagons have actually had the issue on the curves addressed. The piece of underbody detail that was ca causing the problem has actually, you know, essentially been clipped off and, um, and, and, and you're no longer getting that resistance on the curves. 
They still did need the lubrication to uh, improve the general running performance. And there is a level of wobble you'll see from time to time. In all honesty, it doesn't show that well on the video. It was much more apparent uh, when I was actually doing it in, in real life. You can see it a bit better. So I'll talk about that as well. But the good news here is obviously we're running behind a, a pretty low par or under par uh, class 66. It's the Hornby class 66 and I, I'm going to do a full review of that actually to give my opinion on it. People know that it's not that uh, it's not no, not an equivalent to a Backman class 66 or a Hatton's class 66 for example. It, it's far more limited so I'm running with the six car rake here which is about the limit that this can can take this locomotive can take now as you can see it's going around around here at a fair tilt and um, I'm doing pretty good um, now at low speed I did get some wheel slip from time to time uh, at low speed with the six cars but in general it's it's fine and I think it's you know very presentable to run it uh, with six six of these cars so, you know, the, the main thing on this particular aspect of the running session was I did notice, as I say, uh, some, some wobble uh, on a number of occasions. It is intermittent and it's nothing like the problems I had on the, the Revolution Trains cargo wagons. If you watch my review of that, it's certainly not like that at all. Okay, so that's the end of the running session. We're kind of bringing it to all pretty quickly. So we're going to get into a summary of the performance issues. So, so for percentage of the wagons, and it is directional dependent... Uh, there is a high level of running resistance on the curves and a derailing on the radius 2 curves, which is quite disturbing to see that. And the main thing here is removing the offending underbody detail, which we'll look at next. The second issue that I had was a medium to high level of running resistance on the straights as well as the curves. So take the first issue off the table and you still have a level of resistance beyond what I'd expect. Certainly these do not perform the same as say the Dapol ICAs or the Dapol HIA wagons which are super smooth and have a very low level of, of, of running resistance. This is not in the same category as them. There's, there's no doubt about there's more resistance here. A partial solution is uh, lubrication of the wheel bearings and you know I did do that on, uh, on the wagons for these running sessions so that's what you're seeing in the running session. And as, I, as I mentioned it did reduce the current consumption for the backman by 100 milliamps so that's it that's not insignificant now the third thing there is the intermittent upper body wobble on the straights it didn't occur with every wagon it was, and it's very intermittent you don't see it all the time I, I didn't get to the bottom of this one it's not a deal breaker and it's nothing like the problem i had with the revolution trains wagons which was totally unacceptable from a wobble perspective i think this one i can live with uh, but it is there, it's not perfect, and it would be good to see that addressed in future wagon releases. Okay, so these are the issues. So let's take a, a, a deeper look at the issue of the underbody catching. So here I'm uh, pushing a wagon by hand, and you see that it's catching when it hits the curve there. Okay, and that's on radius 3. So we're going to put it onto a radius 2 curve. We're going to do the same thing again, and it derails. So this wagon has this underbody detail that's catching the bogey and hence you're getting this sort of behavior. Now it didn't derail that time and it doesn't derail at all times but it is catching. There's a lot of resistance in there. So I'm just going to show it here and we'll do a close up of it later on. It is directionally dependent. Now when you reverse the orientation of the wagon it doesn't affect it. If the bogies are facing the other way they don't hit the piece of, of plastic, the offending piece of plastic and hence you don't have a problem. So it is directional dependent, uh, for inter and it's, it's, it's directional dependent in terms of the direction of the wagon, not the direction you're traveling in. Okay, here, so we're looking at the underbody, and so we can see the offending piece of plastic there, you can see it sticking out. Uh, now it's a totally invisible piece of detail, so it's superfluous detail. I mean, it's detail that shouldn't be there from day one. Uh, you know, you don't even see it, uh, but it is causing all these problems. So that's the detail that you've got to get rid of. My recommendation to you is if you have this problem, you contact a cure scale like I did. Uh, they will send you a link to a video uh, that shows you how to remove it. I'm not going to include it here because I think it's, you need to contact a cure scale for that uh, and, and get the video off them. And it's important that they know how many people are having this issue as well. The party line that they gave me was that it's only on a small batch number of batches of these wagons. 
I kind of suspect it's on more than that, but I've no reason to know either way. So it's important if you f- find that you have this issue, if you see this on, in your underbody, you have this problem, contact a cure scale, they'll send you the video, and then basically you need to take a blade uh, to carefully remove that piece of detail and make sure you fully remove it. It's no harm actually going a bit deeper even than I've done here. You just can't see this anyway, so you're not losing anything in terms of the look of your of your wagon. And you just need to make sure you've cleared it uh, so that it, there is no friction or anything like that happening when those wheels rotate when you're negotiating a curve, and particularly the radius two curves where you can have problems. So that's that one. Uh, the other piece, I've just a, a diagram here showing you adding the oil to the wheel bearings. So it's showing you where you add it. So you'll have to put it, it's a slow and tedious process. You'll have to put a, a small piece of oil don't add, apply too much. Uh, it needs to be a relatively light oil. I just used some engine oil that I had uh, for, for my locomotives. I don't know if that's the best option. So I'm open to recommendations from people who might have um, had to do this with other wagons. It did improve things for me. It did give an improved level of performance and I think it, you probably will need to do it. Okay, so there are the performance issues. So a lot more in here than I, I think we'd normally be discussing uh, on a review like this, unfortunately. I suppose the good news is that the remediation is there. So in terms of addressing any serious problems, we've been able to do that. We do have some lingering issues and we'll reflect those in the scoring later on when we get into that. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to get into the summary. And the first two slides I have here, uh, I'm not going to go through them in detail, but they're here for reference. They capture all of the different livery types available for each of the wagon types. And this is for the HAYA wagons. And you can see the different livery options there. You've got the GBRF uh, coal wagons, the Fastline Freight, and then you've got the unpainted 2X wagon. There's, there's only one pack for that. And I suppose the important things as well is that the pack one for the GBRF coal and the Fastline Freight, they do contain the working taillight. So for the biomass wagons, there's four different packs, giving you eight unique wagons here. So it's a little bit more straightforward. There's only one livery at this point in time, which is the GBRF VTG livery. So let's get into the summary of capabilities. So we kind of covered off the different pack breakdowns there. They've all got NEM pockets with the kinematic close coupling. They run on a rate minimum radius two curves, but obviously you will need to remediate that problem. If you do have that uh, additional superfluous plastic in your underbody, then it will not run on a radius two or certainly won't run satisfactorily. So uh, you'll need to fix that before they will run correctly on radius two. Extra features are the sprung buffers detailing kit, this significant level of separately applied detail. And there is the working tail light, which comes with the wagon pack one. Uh, for the fast line freight and for the GBRF coal liveries. They come with the blackened uh, profile wheel sets, uh, which you saw during the close up view. Unboxed weight for the HYA is 160 grams and for the biomass 166 grams, just a slightly extra weight there for the lid on, on those wagons. And the retail selling price is pretty consistent. Um, it's 74.95, which you'll get from the Curascale website or from the channels who sell a Curascale. Now the benefit with the Kuriska website is there is a 10% discount for three or more wagon packs that are purchased at the same time. And that's as of April 2022. So I obviously took advantage of the uh, discounting when I bought my packs and that does make these very cost effective. Okay, so now we get into the scoring. So in terms of the running performance, a couple of data points, I guess. I'm giving it an 8.0 score, which is a little bit less, just a little bit less than the Revolution Trains cargo wagons. And I did a retest with those cargo, cargo wagons actually before completing this review, just to kind of validate that. And they are smoother. Uh, they have a lower level of resistance. Now they had a wobble problem, which had to be addressed, just as this wagon has a problem. Now when you address both of them, and so you've, you've got like for like, it still has a better level of performance uh, in terms of resistance. It scored an 8.4, so I think this giving this an 8.0, uh, it is just a little bit behind it on that in that regard. Now I did take off one of the the bogies here, one of the uh, you know in, when you look at the spec sheet for these wagons, uh, one of the things that's called out is the really low resistance um, wheels wheel set and the bogey. Now the bogey actually when you do take it off is really low resistance and um, it doesn't reflect what the wagons are, so. 
I took the bogey off one of the wagons that was, I suppose, giving a level of resistance, not perfect, but not that bad either. Uh, when I take the bogey off and just run it on its own, it's really smooth and clean. Uh, so it's the combination in some way is giving you that added resistance and hence we're getting the score we have here. So I don't, I don't know, it's, I, you know, there's a lot of investigation. I don't have the time to do that. I've got it to a level that I'm happy with. I think at an 8.0 score, the running performance is certainly good enough for me. I think the only potential limitation, limitation for some people may be that it limits the size of the rake that you can pull depending on your locomotive. So an 8.0 it's not as good a score as I would have hoped for, but it's not a bad score either. And I think we just need to factor that in. But there are a couple of little niggly pieces there. And I think if you do continue to have issues with your wagons, then you you do need to get onto a cure scale. If the remediation isn't fully working for you and you're still not happy, then you know you just have to have that conversation with a cure scale. Appearance and details are 10 out of 10. I, I think this is the best looking most detailed freight wagon I have so it's a 10 out of 10. Uh, I did score a 10 out of 10 for the the weathered ICA wagons and you know they I don't think they have the same level of detail but they're they're good in their own way and they are a 10. Uh, this is a, a a larger 10 than, than that 10 if I put it that way there's, there's just so much printed detail on here it's a fantastic achievement and that they really are uh, excellent wagons. Extras and variants, we've got a good selection of variants, I think, for the coal wagon, not, not so much the biomass, uh, which doesn't have that many variants anyway. Uh, you're talking about a different wagon type, if, if you want a variation there on the biomass side. So I think a nine is good here. You've got the extras, you've got the taillights. Um, you know, obviously I don't like the batteries, but it still is an extra uh, that you don't get. So, uh, you know, a nine out of 10 is, is a very good score. Uh, build quality, I'm taking one and a half off here. The packaging is a five out of five. So if you take the other five on the score, I'm giving it a 3.5, taking into account the fact that that issue was on all 20 of my wagons. It's on a number of other people have commented me on the running sessions have the same issue. So it's not a really narrow issue. It, it's broader. And if you know, if you get 20 wagon sample size of 20 and they all have it, well, then that's not so good, right? So um, I think 8.5, there's something missing there. I don't know what it, you know, I don't know how that got through the process, whether it was a design quality issue or a manufacturing quality issue. Only a curious girl will really know that, but I'm sure they'll know it and they'll look to rectify it for future releases, for sure. This should be probably a 10 out of 10, to be honest. There is that issue there. I have to take into account, I, I would hammer any other vendor for that type of issue as well. So I'm not going hard on a curious scale here. It was there. I have to take into account the scoring. Price value at the normal recommended retail price is the 9 out of 10. At the discounted price, it's a 10 out of 10. So I'm going halfway here at a 9.5. Uh, so if you purchased the discounted version like myself, well, you've got it for uh, a better price and uh, it's, it's worth more to you, getting better, val better value. If you're getting it just on a one-off basis, you're getting the packs, well, then you're, you're going to be paying a little bit more. Unfortunately, you're not getting as good value, but it's still excellent value for this quality of, of uh, wagon. So the overall score is a 9 out of 10, and I think all things considered, that's probably about right. I did hope these wagons would be somewhere probably north of 9.5 out of 10. That kind of, was my kind of initial expectation, that these could have been very close to a 10 out of 10 type score. Um, but... It's not. Um, there's a few reasons for that, but nine, uh, a 9 out of 10 score is really good either way for a wagon like this, and I think this is a, a representative score. I do caveat that with the re remediation, so if you obviously do get one of the wagons that has that problem, you will need to fix it to effectively have a wagon that represents that score. Okay, so now we get into the recommendation. First of all, these are absolutely top class models from a visual detail perspective, and I would see them as a best in class in that regard. Unfortunately, the running performance is a tier below that of the DAPOL ICA and HIA wagons, and those wagons will continue to be class leaders from a performance perspective. The need for immediate action for a lot of buyers is disappointing, though thankfully it's only a very modest adjustment that's required. Those with radius 4 curves or larger will not likely need to make any changes in this regard, but will still have to live with a less than perfect performance level overall. Factoring everything, 
I'm still recommending these wagons based on their appearance, detail and overall excellent value. These could and perhaps should have been scoring closer to a 10 out of 10 overall, but they aren't, and I'm sure CureScale will take the learnings into future releases. So there you have it. The complexity of producing large bogeyed wagons shouldn't be underestimated. And while the CureScale have conquered all of the visual and detail challenges, there is outstanding work to bring the running performance of these wagons up to that same level. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has already given me their feedback on these wagons, and would ask any other owners of these wagons to do likewise. To help round out the picture and perhaps cover usage scenarios I may not have touched upon here, such as usage on inclines. All of this will help your fellow modelers to decide whether these wagons are for them or not. Apologies for the extra length of today's video. There was a lot to get through, but I think it was important to cover the ground and these wagons warranted the time to be given to them. I have a total of 20 wagons at this point, all of which I have modified now, and only one of which remains problematic and which I'll need to give some more time to. Am I happy with the time I had to spend troubleshooting these wagons? No. Am I happy with where I've got them to now? Probably yes. And to be honest, I am relieved that they're at a point now where they're usable on my layout. I dreaded the thought of having to return them all due to some fundamental problem that couldn't be resolved easily. I suspect there are others out there with similar feelings. So we've got there in the end and can now enjoy these magnificent wagons on our layouts. If for whatever reason you cannot get your wagons running at a satisfactory level, then please reach out to a Cura scale and they will sort you out one way or another. So thanks for joining today's review. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it informative. I look forward to seeing you on the next one and I'll be covering why I chose to go down the Backman Class 90 route rather than waiting for the new Hornby Class 91. In the meantime, keep safe and happy modelling.